limestone. It's not only what the keys are made of, it's what this house is made of as well. Back when Asa Tift had been a young sea captain, experience had taught him just how destructive a hurricane could be, but it also made him determined to build a hurricane-proof house. <laughs> now, he bought this plot of land because it has an elevation of 16 feet above sea level, and that makes this the second highest point on the island. His workmen started chopping out these blocks of coral here, and after two years, they collected enough of these to begin work on the house. Well, Tift had his house built directly over its own quarry pit, and that became the only basement in the Keys. And thanks to the elevation, the water table is well below the basement floor, so it's always dry down there. Of course, Hemingway turned that into the finest wine cellar in the county. He and Martha moved to Cuba shortly after Christmas in 1939, and at first he had every intention of spending the rest of his life there. Not only did he love Cuba, but Martha had found him a beautiful 15-acre estate there called Finca Bahia, or Lookout Farm in Spanish. For the next 20 years, he had such a good time there, he didn't get a whole lot of writing done, but that's where he wrote The Old Man in the Sea. Well, in 1959, he went to Spain again, only this time, because of Cold War animosities, he was unable to return to his home in Cuba so instead, he went to his hunting lodge in Idaho. Well, being forced out of Cuba put him into a pretty severe state of depression. Eventually, Mary was able to talk him into going to the Mayo Clinic, and he received electroshock therapy for it, but that only made matters worse. The electroshock had a side effect of wiping out large portions of his memory, and it also put an end to his writing career. A few months after their father's death, the boys sold this place to a local businesswoman named Bernice Dixon. She spent a few years living here, but nearly every day Hemingway fans would knock on her door and ask her if they could look around. Finally, in 1964, Mrs. Dixon moved out and opened the place for tours. Her family still owns the property, and they do a wonderful job of keeping the old place going. Well folks, I want to thank all of you for coming along on my tour. You're welcome to spend some time just looking around on your own if you like. We've also got a nice little bookstore right across from the swimming pool. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to stick around and answer them.